In Conversation is a forum for dialogue of contemporary social and cultural issues which affect an evolving and emerging Indian American community committed to preserving the vast customs of a vibrant cultural heritage. Welcome to Darshan America, folks. We come to you from Washington, D.C. My name is Ramesh Bhutani. And I'm Asta Verma. And I have been saying this from the last 25 Diwalis, <laughs> 25 Christmases, and 25 New Years. And I must tell you that I am most proud of this show. And I remember our beginnings. But before we begin with that, folks, you're not looking at the regular Dershan television show. This is special show. And the reason it's special is as a Dershan family, we have decided that just like you, we have grown up, you know. I remember what we were like in 87 <laughs> and what we are today as an Indian American community. Those of you who have been here probably will understand how Dershan played a part in your life and how you played in Dershan's life. And this is a good news. This is how I look at it. December 31st, that will be our last show. I think we have done a great job. I, I hope I have never made Indian Americans look bad. That was <laughs> the first requirement. I remember my wife always said, show is the most important thing. Not you, not somebody else, and everybody needs to look good. And I think we made everybody look good. Indeed, this is uh, for those who have been loyal to Darshan for so many years watching. Certainly, I grew up watching Darshan. Uh, you talk about 1987. I was a girl, you know, <laughs> watching the show. At that time, there were only a few shows on the air. You know, in fact, our community really didn't have too many places where we could go and connect with others in the community. And so when Darshan came online, it was very new, very novel, and very much of a pioneering effort That's uh, true. to be on TV and to be talking about our community. My parents were so excited. You know, we got up every morning religiously mm -hmm. and watched the show. And I think for me, Darshan and I maybe began our association even back then, long before I ever became a member of the show and of the Darshan family. We can all celebrate and look back on the 25-year legacy that this show will leave behind. That's true. In 1987, folks, that's when we started. And I remember that the show was all about culture, you know, Indian culture. There were lots of dances, the South Indian dances, a lot of singing. We only had nine different channels in 1987, and we were on one of them, which is extremely important. I mean, people regularly flipping will see us, and I want to tell you we received more letters, more comments from the greater community than specifically from the Indian American community. And I also want to remember... When I came on the scene, I guess it was 1990, Isaac, who used to be the producer of the old Darshan show, he told me, you know, Ramesh, this is media. You understand what media is? <laughs> this is media. And I want to tell you, I heard that word, and it dawned on me that, you know, this is media. We are on one of the how, nine channels. How we need right to take he was. advantage. How right he was. In fact, if you think about where 25 years have brought just what we call our media age, we have changed uh, a whole universe and a half from where That's we used right. to be. You know, as you said, there were nine channels. Now think about your local cable providers and just the choice of channels that you have. Four hundred channels. There was no NFL Network. There was no cable. Your broadcast. television. Your television might have four hundred or minus thousand. <laughs> you know, well, but never to lose sight of this. That and moving into the digital age. Think about where yeah. the world stands today with Twitter and with YouTube and the ability for people to reach and broadcast themselves. At that time, 25 years ago, there was no real ability for our community to broadcast itself and therefore connect with ourselves. Yeah. That's probably the single biggest value I think Darshan has provided over the last two and a half decades. 
That's right. Now, let's talk about the eras. <laughs> I always call this as an introspection era, the first time when we started in 87. We're trying to find ourselves. We're trying to figure out who is where. You know, well, yes. it's the most important time at that time. So culture played a very important role in getting to know each other. And then there was a second era, which was in the 90s. You all remember the uh, technology hit us. And there were so many young Indian Americans that were getting into this field. And we made sure that every one of them was on the show. So I call that as a business era, as I wanted to tell everybody that, look, here's an Indian American. He's educated, hard worker, married with children, and the children are doing well. I mean, this is who we are as a community. The tech boom meant for the first time that everyone saw Indians contributing to society in a positive way. They could see that not only do we come with highly educated backgrounds, we came with cultural values, family values, and that we could be a huge engine of growth for this country and for India. In Conversation is a forum for dialogue of contemporary social and cultural issues which affect an evolving and emerging Indian American community committed to preserving the vast customs of a vibrant cultural heritage. If you listen to Nita Goyal Popley's introduction to In Conversation, that really defines what we are, where we are going, and I want to tell you, I have never changed it. One of the things people will be surprised for the 25 continuous years, our basic format has never changed. It was culture in the early beginnings, it was business later on, then it was sort of newsy business and politics. <laughs> and politics is the era that I loved most. And if I can go back to what you said about Nita Goel Popli, the reason why her statement stands today, as it did all those years ago, is because it's still relevant. Yes. What she was saying about preserving our culture, what she says about wanting to see our community prosper and grow, even yeah. while we're in this new country, in this new land, well, it's as much true today, and even true for those Indians that are still coming here to this country, as it was to those of us that are now second generation Indians. That's true. And in that respect, Darshan, to me, the biggest value it has provided to this community is that it has been a reflection of our community and the community's evolution for two and a half decades. Now, one of the things I also want to tell you along the way, folks, you know, I was young, I was brash, <laughs> you know, I had the ideas. And I took on, I took on some people in the community. I took on newspapers. In fact, I want to tell you, up until 1990, India Abroad or India West or any of the other newspapers that were flying around here never talked about Indian Americans, never showed any Indian Americans. We had fights with these newspapers. In <laughs> fact, I remember one of the uh, uh, shows that I did with Nita Goel Popley, there was an editorial in one of the Indian newspapers. They say, where does Mr. Bhutani come in from recommending that the girls should start dating? They should never date before they are married. <laughs> and, man, I want to tell you, it just blew me away that these people, they were looking at girls as if they're some kind of personal slaves for them. I took that editorial. I read it piece by piece. Many of you may remember this. And at the end, this is what I did. I said, this editorial, ah, and I put it in the dustbin. And I want to tell you, that was really great because that editorial, line by line, showed that the man who wrote the editorial was not, never even married has never had a child and he's writing an and he's writing an editorial on girls should not date and I'm a father of two girls so it was a great win for us washington post folks used to write nothing but about snake charmers we went to the ambassador and we said you know what India doesn't look very good even though when we go to delhi or bombay you know it's, it's a nice town but not according to the newspaper here in Washington Post. What can you do? So he made a deal with the India Broadcasting and gave us India this week. Folks, 
every week you can see in New Delhi, in Bombay, how normal we are. We drive cars, we go to dinners. And I have to we, tell you, yeah. when I watched those segments, it was probably for the first time that I was proud to be Indian. Yeah. Because up until then, I myself growing up in this country didn't know my own homeland well enough to feel proud of it. And when you're in school and you're struggling with your identity, and at that time, you know, the, the other term came into being that we all know.